so my name is Lucy Warren. I studied a undergraduate in anthropology and I'm currently studying a master's in marketing communication and I'm a fourth year student. Can you tell us your hometown? Uh, it's Jersey in the Channel Islands, so a bit further for most people, but not too far. So if we go for the undergrad first, yeah. why did you choose your course? Um, so I didn't really have a vocational career that I wanted to do, like law or medicine or anything like that. Um, and my school kind of tailored you towards studying something then academic, a kind of subject that you could transfer your, those skills into. Um, didn't want to do anything specific like geography or history. I wanted to do something a bit more interesting. Hmm. Um, and I really liked the human side of geography. So my tutor just suggested I look at anthropology and I read some books and thought, yeah, I'll give this a go. You've now finished your course. What have you thought of your course? Um, I really enjoyed the course. I think um, it's quite a small course at my university and also it's not offered a lot of places. I think it's roughly 50 universities in the whole of the UK it's offered at. Um, but I think it's very interesting and it gives you a lot of opportunities to look at lots of different faculties and departments. So you're looking at units across the whole university rather than just within one subject frame as the undergraduate was looking at the study of people. So you had a lot of opportunity to, to, and freedom to study what you wanted within that subject. And if you go into your masters, mm -hmm. why did you choose, obviously you changed from what you did in undergrad to master. Yeah. So what, why did you make this change? Um, so, with studying people, I really wasn't sure, like I said, what I wanted to do at sixth form. Um, so I took university as an opportunity just to try as many new things as possible. And um, through the course, throughout the course, I really liked studying like culture and societies. And then within that kind of habits with buying and branding and things like that. So within my final year, I focus my dissertation on music festivals and sort of the marketing around that. Um, but I didn't really have enough knowledge to then go into like the marketing industry. So I thought, let's just do a year of pure marketing. And then that really made me realize throughout the three year course that I wanted to go into marketing. Um, and I didn't do a, a placement. So I thought, let's do a year of this alongside trying to get some work experience and then go from there. So you're now just come into three, four months into your master's course. Mm. Could you remind us of the course you're taking for your master's? Uh, yes, so for my master's, it's marketing and communications. Um, so what have you thought of your course so far? Yeah, obviously um, the new environment that we're learning in with COVID is different, but I have to say, again, I can't speak highly enough of Bournemouth University. They're really um, accommodating. And I thought at master's, it would be kind of a lot more independent which don't get me wrong, you have a lot more freedom within assignments to choose what you want to look at and what you want to read. But um, they're really, really supportive. And there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutorials. Um, and yeah, I, so far so good. Like I'm really enjoying the experience. Okay. So if we go into your sixth form, what subjects did you take at sixth form? Uh, so for A2, I did philosophy, geography and art. And then I had an AS in biology. And did any of these subjects help you with your course? Um, undergrad. Yeah, undergrad. I would say definitely if you're wanting to do an academic undergraduate course, if you're looking to do something that's essay based, I'd really recommend doing essay based subjects. Um, things like your classics, like your English, philosophy, uh, geography, history, they're really, really good ones. Um, but then I think equally what I found was that as long as you have some experience with academic writing, you're fine, but also choose things that you like doing because it's not necessarily, you don't need to do things that you don't, that aren't listed specifically. Obviously, if you want to do like a course that medicine or something, mm. there's subjects you need to do for that. Mm. But for majority of courses that aren't subjects that you have to do, there's recommended ones, but I would just say have maybe one or two essay based subjects for a course like mine that's what I would recommend and what about your masters what do you think the best a levels would be for that um in 
terms of the masters, the only one I think would probably be business, maybe having a business or economics. Um, again, I wouldn't say economics is even really that key. Um, definitely business. If I could go back, I probably would pick business. Um, but then also just pick things that you like and that you think you'll do well in. Did you take a placement year in your undergrad? No, I didn't. And is there a reason for this? Um, it wasn't compulsory um, in my course. And a lot of them were based abroad. Um, and they were only for maybe a few months at a time. So I would have had to have get, got maybe a couple. Um, and then also if I did find one in the UK, which they're quite rare, I would have had to have moved away from home. So it would have been quite a big expense mm. um, not having graduated. Okay. So if we, could you remind us of the university you're currently studying at? Yes, I'm studying at Bournemouth University. Can you tell us the best and worst things about studying at Bournemouth University? Starting off with the worst. Oh, the worst. I hate to be that person, but I don't think I can think of anything that's really awful. Um, I think maybe there's potential for maybe a bit more investment into certain aspects of the uni. Like, Could you expand? Um, maybe developing like the sports facilities or um, updating parts of the campus. But again, it's quite a modern campus. It's like a good size. Um, I think some faculties maybe feel a little bit, the faculty that I was in, we were a very small course within that faculty. And I don't know if we were always really represented. So mm. I think sometimes the funding can be like distributed. So to they might favor the bigger subjects yeah yeah but again i don't that's only from hearsay that's mm. not really from your personal yeah it didn't really affect my experience that much but just from what i heard from lecturers and things and the, um, the best um <laughs> i think that bu is a really um inclusive place i think it, you're encouraged to do as much as you want get involved as, in as many things. I think there's a really good sense of like, I hate that word, but like community, it's quite like tight knit, mm. but without being too like cliquey. Mm. Um, and I think from um, my friends at home that have been at other universities, I think the support that BU offers is quite rare. Mm. Like they're quite good at checking up on you in terms of your work and offering and saying we can get an extension or they're really understanding and they're quite good at knowing who you are and knowing your name and things where my, my other friends they don't know their lecturers and they wouldn't the lecturers wouldn't know them so again like you said that kind of community feel yeah yeah and like on my course they did like um track your attendance which when you're at first year you're probably like, oh, that's so annoying but it is quite good because it makes you go in mm. so if we go to the accommodation mm-hmm where did you live in your first year? Um, so I, um, sorry, where did I live? <laughs> in my first year, um, I went into student halls and I lived in Home Park. And what was it like at Home Park? What was the kind of vibe, the kind of students there? So I was really lucky because it was brand new, it had been built brand new. And I think it's always a risk going into, or people always say to you, it's a risk going into brand new accommodation because it doesn't have a reputation yet um and it yeah it was really nice luckily um the floor that I lived on it was quite a sociable floor everyone was quite similar everyone kind of knocked on each other's doors within the first week um and yeah it was really really good so if we say on a scale from party to chill where would you put it on the scale um <laughs> I'd probably say it was towards the more party end, but I think it might not necessarily be as much fun as the other ones that you can pick at that university. But it just depends on who you liked going out with. In your second year? Um, in my second year, I lived in a student house. So yeah. the rental house, so private, yeah. privately. So what was it like going from a house, from home park to a house? Um, well, like, home park was really, really nice because it, it was brand new. Um, and it was really easy. I don't think I realised how easy it was living there until I got to the house because it was a house of six girls and if something needed changing or doing, it would be like, how do you do that? <laughs> Whereas in Home Park, you know, you just tell them and they come up and fix it for you. Um, and I think there's just a lot more 
no, I don't wouldn't say stress, but a lot more responsibility in a house, like locking the doors and making sure that things are like kept maintained and yeah, what, deposits and things. What advice would you give to a student who's looking to start, who's looking to go from first year to second year and move into a house? Don't rush. Don't let estate agents, um, I don't want to use the word like bully, but force you into anything. Like speak to your mum and dad, like listen to what they've got to say because they're probably right. Um, don't take the first one that you see. And also don't feel like, you know, you're living in big fats of, maybe like five to eight people in your first year you don't have to live with five to eight people you can live with three people it's a lot more realistic and chilled probably um but yeah don't don't sign up to a house within the first month of uni like think about it don't let people stress you out saying all the good ones are going to go because you always get one sorted and they're all kind of a similar level you will mm. find something that suits you and also think about how close it is to the campus mm. um because we didn't and that was so silly it was about half an hour walk oh okay <laughs> but, and what if we go to your third year um so a lot of my friends went on placement so um we decided to go back into halls just mm. me and my friend and it was Bellaton House. Okay, so what was it a, what kind of room was it? Was it a full flat or just two? It was just a um, kind of a two bed flat. It was kind of like a version of a double studio, essentially, mm -hmm. um, because we couldn't really find any two bed private rentals. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't think Cause would even offer a two bed flat and then someone Bellaton. at the uni found it for us and we were like oh, okay well, we'll do so that. what was it like living at Bellaton what kind of vibe is Bellaton um it was a lot more relaxed than home park I would say that was it wasn't like a party place um you were a bit more removed even though they're all in the same area the halls Bellaton's just a bit further away from where all the other halls are located so I think mm -hmm. people that met in Bellaton kind of stayed friends mm. and went out with each other, whereas all the other halls kind of mix quite a lot. Um, and it was a lot more second and final years that were in there. It was rare that you came across any first years because it was private, a private um, halls, halls yeah. rather than a university halls. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just nice. So on the scale of party to chill, it'd be more towards the chill side. Yeah. And I think if you're in your final year, that's probably something that's a bit more suited to the dissertation life. So after your third year, you then went into your master's? Yes. And where are you living now? So I'm currently at home um, living. Um, I'll probably return to Bournemouth in January. And we're actually back in Home Park. Mm -hmm. um, again, because me and my friend it was just the two of us staying on and we just thought oh we'll go into a flat share and home park because they weren't making you pay a deposit or anything during um covid mm -hmm. so you could cancel and you wouldn't have to pay or anything mm -hmm. so it was quite a good option because we didn't know if we were definitely going to sign on to our courses um so yeah and we're living with two final year boys it's just the four of us okay. so, it's relaxed. so what do you think the best Born for accommodation is for first years? For first years, I would say definitely, I think they're all good. I don't think you're going to panic if you don't get your first choice. Um, but I think definitely Bailey Point is a good option. Um, that's got a gym and stuff included, so it works out quite well. Um, I think Purbeck and Cranbourne are good ones. They're very, very fun. Um, we had a lot of friends in there. Um, and I'd say Dorchester or Home Park. I think any of those, they were kind of the main ones in my year. I know it's different now because there's a lot more mm. halls in that area, but anything around there, you'll have a great time, I think. Second years, would you suggest they move into a house or stay in student halls? Um, I think second year is definitely the year to do and I think part of the university experience is living in a house I think you should do it um and I think second year is definitely the year to do that because you don't really have like like the, the, the stress but it can it can be a lot living with 
like six other people in a house because they're normally quite small spaces mm. but yeah I would suggest for second years to live in like private rented houses for sure but just to not um get like exploited by the landlord sort of thing so talk about the Bournemouth area could you tell us about the Bournemouth nightlife pre-covid what was the club for you oh um well I play lacrosse with the uni so on a Wednesday the all the sports teams go to cameo um okay. which is obviously really good cameo. fun yeah cameo Wednesday but I think my favorite was actually the student union the old fire station um okay. and I really liked like the suddenly funk or tech box okay. just a little really what fun, is the yeah. nightclub area like for, for students who are curious um I think it's definitely really student orientated the nightclubbing scene in Bournemouth um you can go out like each night of the week if you wanted to and there's a specific night that all the students will go to on those nights but it won't be like than maybe some of the bigger unis like Leeds or Manchester where there's thousands of people out every night but I think that's a bit more fun in that sense because you feel like everyone out is a student um so you know that they're students um and yeah it's really cheap and yeah I think there's something for everyone like there's a whole range of different like events and things so you'll find something that you like if we go through, like you said, the week, students can go every night, what would be Monday? Um, oh, when I was in first year, it was Halo. Tuesday. So, toast. When Cameo Wednesdays. Cameo Wednesday, yeah. Thursday? Uh, Thursday would always be like a student union night, like an apple bum or suddenly fun or tech box. Friday? And then the lollipop, which would be the little fire station. And would the weekend count or is it just Monday to Friday? Um, it's normally Monday to Friday, but the weekend, like, we, we've we been out on weekends. I think you can go anywhere really on the weekend. More so events, maybe at like O2 Academy or okay. I know in more of the locals from like Bournemouth go out on Saturdays. and But then Sundays you've got um, Snake Bite as well, which is hmm. always an option. So you go into the Bournemouth shops. Yeah. Is there more local shops or more um, chain shops? So if you've got more, you know, like chain shops would be Primark, um, JD. Uh, or yeah, I think more definitely ones. more chains, like chains on the high street for sure. There's definitely more local shops maybe in and around like Winton and Charminster. Um, but in the town, like high street by the beach, there's definitely more chains. So can um, you just tell the students what Winton and Charminster is? Yeah, yeah. So Winton and Charminster are kind of like the, I guess, the suburbs, would you say? Or like the, it's not really town suburbs. Like, yeah, yeah. The town's kind of small, small high streets that are next to the university campus. Are they far? Um, and then they're oh, about 10 minutes. Okay. Winton. Um, Char- Charminster, another 10 minutes in the same direction. Um, and then the town centre, it's like you just keep going like further and further mm. out type of thing um but yeah I think you get your chains in the main town and then probably your local stores out in Winton and Charminster where most of the second year and third year students live in houses and if we go into the food shops what mm-hmm. is it more, again local or more chain um in terms of supermarkets or like restaurants so this would be let's say both okay yeah um I'd say it's definitely again more chains in definitely the town center um, but then as you get out and, more local yeah and as you move out to more like residential areas like Winton and Charmers so then it's more local um, local like green grocers and stuff and restaurants is there anything else you think students should know who are curious about studying at Bournemouth University about the area um, or places oh if, a better question where's somewhere where's somewhere where if a student came to Bournemouth they must visit Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think that I, in saying that, I don't know if you could like limit it down to just one place. I think Bournemouth is so lucky that it's got the beach, it's such a nice aspect. So I think Aruba in that area with like, it's like a bar restaurant type of thing on the beach. I think that's a great place. Um, 
but yeah for if you were looking if you're saying to a student there's one place you've got to go I'd say it's definitely old fire station that would be my like go-to for them hey what general advice would you give to first years about to study at university um oh I hate everyone says this but like just be yourself like it's the chance you get just to start fresh say exactly what you like and think and what you want to do you don't have to pretend or try and fit in because there's such a like range of characters you will find your people mm. um and I wouldn't stress if like you're not living with in people initially that you're like yeah I really get along with them or if your course mates like there's so many different circles that you get put into that you will eventually find that like group of people that you like click with because you've got your course mates you've got your flatmates then potential societies and things like that um and also just to take any opportunity that you get given like you've got these three years where people aren't going to laugh at you if you want to go to all the guest lectures or if you want to go to the placement talks or join Mm. like I don't know the cheese society like just do it because it's the three years where you've got the the opportunity to okay what advice would you give to students about to study at Bournemouth University um probably similar stuff um just to make the most of it as well get involved as in as many of the BU events because they're a great laugh there's varsity day there's um BU come dancing things like that even if you don't do sport go along to the socials they have a social aspect for most teams um or there's other societies that you can join because it just gets you really involved in your university life or yeah I think that is one thing with BU that is quite good the amount of clubs and things available so take advantage of that what advice do you give to students about to study your course undergrad at university um do the reading <laughs> don't not do the reading <laughs> um but don't panic first year's a year where you can make mistakes um especially in my course like you it's new having to write really academically and with referencing and things and you've never had to do it before no one's had to do it um and you're all in the same boat I think I thought oh my god everyone knows how to do this and I don't mm. and then you speak to people and you're like oh and don't be afraid to ask for help as well I was really scared to ask for help in my first year and then I realized oh no the lecturers do want you to do well mm. um and yeah that it it will be okay initially it's a bit of a shock but that as soon as you start getting into the flow of it it kind of just clicks Mm. and you do get there if you persevere with it you will get the hang of it um yeah that would be the main things and what advice would you give to students about to study wanting to study your master's course um again I would say don't I think more so with the masters don't just panic and say you're going to do a masters because it's an extra year um, and it's giving you something to do really research it and know why you want to do the course um for me I really wanted to learn about skills that I could take into industry and learn just as much as possible um and then kind of sinuate what's what industry I wanted to go into um and just yeah make sure you're doing it for the right reasons along with that um but I would just say research the course as much as possible and think if it's suited to you then just go for it okay you chose going to university over an an apprenticeship so let's go online to work what path you to make this choice um being honest the school that I went to um you were heavily encouraged to go to university um the only other option was kind of where I live finance is a big thing here um so it was either you you go to uni or you go and work in finance and for me it was well I don't want to work in finance so (laughs) I'm going to go to uni um and yeah that just the finance thing didn't really appeal to me um and I wanted to get away from like living in a small town Mm. um so yeah uni but I think looking back there was definitely more options Mm. than that but I'm glad that my school did really encourage me to go so at this point, I let students have what I like to call a free-for-all. You can say what you want about you, what you like. You could put ads, you could say something smart, you could say something dumb. Literally, the floor is yours. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
I don't know. Just you could give I advice. Would say, you could you, huh? you could give advice. You could tell students another hotspot in Bournemouth. Literally anything. Oh so, yeah, I'd say like, well, okay. The main thing of advice is just enjoy yourself as well. Like there are moments every single person I think would be lying if they didn't say they had that moment where they thought I want to drop out, but this isn't for me. But just don't panic. Everyone has had that, and just take take a step back go home for the weekend speak to your lecturers say I need a week extension that I'm just having a tough time and explain to them that you think you might want to drop out and they'll be like no you don't you're just having a moment like carry on and it will be fine and don't forget to like subscribe and I'm plugged in